car blind, you know, without paying attention, but I can't operate a computer. Anyway, okay. this is Flash, and this is Dropping a Coil with Larry Woods and Rob Works. And I had a little uh, delay tonight. Sorry about being late, guys. But uh, here we are. Let me say hey to the bots and bodies, and then I'll get off the mic for you. And we have a special thanks to Grim for his patience with me. Okay, we're live. He says everything's good. Uh, Refresh. Uh Uh-oh. What do I refresh? He's not telling you refresh. He's telling everybody else. Okay. Good. (laughs) And for the uh, bots and bodies, for your writing entertainment tonight, we've got Barman, Beetle, Cowboy Tech, Grimner, Moose Girl, Kate, Anti-Asmo, Chelsea Circulo, hello, duh, me, frumpy, frumpy work, Gramsci is probably not going to respond, but she might be listening, you never know, Java Doctor 2, Meister Brow, Rob Works, hey Rob, Rome's Vanna White, Weather Dork, and well, let's get Larry in the chat this, this time, too, we forget to tell him about that, in the RLM chat, Larry? Uh, I haven't gone there yet. I'll yeah, well, it, it, it might be a nuisance, but it's a six-second delay on this uh, server, so it's not so bad. Uh, we've Drop got, a link for me. Uh, I think Rob can do that. Rob, help me out while I'm doing all this other stuff. Don't have me clicking stuff now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> no, we got Vanna White, Weather Dork, The Phantom, CC66, Chaskura, Cyborg Noodle, E-Man, N Civ Gromit Jays Nines Jays Kiss underscore Ponsa Smart Ass The Holiest Roger and Z Picks. Okay, you guys, Larry and Rob, have fun. Hey Larry. Hey Rob. Good to be back. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's good to have you back. Um I just dropped a link in there so you should be able to get in the chat there. Um Oh, Grim heard my boss. Uh, it was everything I could do to keep from hacking. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, so how have you been the last couple of weeks? Been doing good. Uh, weather's changing. Flowers are blooming. Yeah. Birds are singing. I'm loving it. There you go. Um, well, I know you were feeling bad last week, I guess, just because of the weather change. So I guess you're you're better now. Yeah, I'm much better now. Excellent. Uh, Excellent. So as I was telling you before the show, I got my donut about three-quarter printed and uh, got some wire ordered and uh, anxious to start wrapping a coil. That's excellent. Uh, we can go into into how to figure up how much wire your coil can handle. Uh, okay. That requires either a micrometer or the specs on the wire, uh, the outside diameter of whatever you're using, and you have to figure the circumference of the inside diameter of your hole. And just figure that up. And you cannot have more wire in the center uh, enough that it'll cross over itself. When you when you meet right. the full the full capacity of the center, that's all you can put in there. Okay, and yeah, that's and one layer. Yeah, it's only one there's, layer thick. There's only one layer of wire anywhere all around it. That's right. If you put more than one layer of wire on it, it heats up. Yeah, because you're creating the eddy currents. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Somewhere I saw the specs on this wire, and now I've lost it. Uh, this, or maybe it was the other one. Hookup wire is what it's called. But as you're as you're wiring your coil, you want all your wires flat and right next to one another. Don't let them cross and and don't let them get on top of one another in any way. Uh, you can have tiny little gaps between them if you have to. 
the closer and straighter it looks, the better. Uh, like if you hold your hand out flat, your fingers don't cross anywhere, and right. that's where your wire should be. And remember, you're gonna you're gonna wire one and two and leave three empty. Wire four and five and leave six empty, and then go on around and leave nine empty. And your three, six, and nine on the outside, as that gives your uh, magnetic field a place to expand to its full capabilities. Right. And then as it gets closer to the center, where you've got that entire center filled with, with wire, that three, six, and nine point is going to be a choke point and increase the magnetic field going into the vortex. So you've got expansion and contraction on the outside. Uh -huh. on, so it's like on, a water nozzle. It forces yeah. it into a... Okay. I got the wire diameter. It's 0. 0.0253. Okay. Inches. So you take that uh, and divide That's... the circumference by that, and that'll tell you how many how many wires you can get in there. Okay, okay, the overall diameter is 0 0.058. That's with the insulation, the actual wires, 0.253. Yeah. So, so you want to use the 0.58. Okay, so basically two inches divided by 0 0.058, so. Two inches is the diameter. You want the circumference. Oh, the circumference. No. Okay. Uh, I don't have the math handy in my head for that. <laughs> Circumference of a two-inch circle. Pi r squared. Radius is one times pi. So it's 3.14. Okay, so 3.14 times. Now, maybe if I got on the calculator. Times the radius, which is two. No, times the diameter of the wire, or divided by the diameter of the wire. No, I'm just figuring the circumference, or the, oh, yeah, the okay. circumference, yeah. which you say is pi times r squared, times r, so, and then that's times itself. Yeah, yeah, times pi times r times 6. r. 6.28, 39.4, so 39 wraps. Yep. This is what I'm looking now at. divide that. Divide that by nine. It's four point three. Okay, so you can get four circuits. Okay. That's not how ours worked out at all. Huh. I'm just doing the math as you give it to me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my my math isn't good. Evan Evans is the math guy here. Okay. But just figure out how many wires at that diameter can go into the circumference. And that'll tell you how to fill it up. Now, okay. there, there's also, as as the wire goes around the coil, it creates a triple Mobius. Uh -huh. And that is also a compression inside the coil, inside mm -hmm. that coil, inside the ring of that coil. Inside the donut. Yeah, inside the donut. So, okay. Uh, and there's only air in there, so there's nothing to restrict it. There's no metal there to saturate and confine it. So, right. Yeah, mine's that, actually completely hollow. Yeah, good. That that allows for a stronger, even stronger magnetic field in the vortex and the hole of the donut. Yeah. Uh, and that's Just why I say due to the way my friend designed it, he put he 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 created two rings. For the donut, so I've actually got a wall. I got about an eighth inch thick wall of the donut outer part, and the entire center is hollow. Excellent. So, as long as it uh, comes together at the top, it's printing right now. We'll see how that turns out. Okay. Because <laughs> it doesn't have any support on the inside of it. So, we'll see how that works out, and I will let you know. Those guys that can write a printing program usually do really well with that. 
Yeah, well, it, 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 it's more to do with the way it, the drawing was designed. The printing program, it'll fill in the the gaps between your walls, which it's doing. And it'll create supports on the outside as it builds up, which it did. But once you get past the halfway mark and it's coming in instead of out, there's no way for it to build those supports because that would go through the donut. Oh, okay. So there's no support on the inside. So, but it it seems to be doing pretty good. It's already on the inward track and it's it's laying them down. For, it looks like they're, they're it's working. Okay. So we'll see how it actually comes out at the very top, though. Anyways, you said something earlier about uh, going through setting up a testing facility or something along those yeah. lines. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me let me explain a little bit more about the power company and okay. what you end up getting at your house. Uh, most of the guys out there are like me and do it in their house and don't have a shed. If you've got a shed, that's even better. When the power company produces power, voltage and amperage start at the same time. That's clean power that has no odd harmonics in it that are going in opposition of power flow. That's what costs you money. The first guy in line puts some form of bad stuff in the line, the odd harmonics, that's developed by the electronic equipment that he has in his house and the switching load. That okay. creates that creates a bad power factor, not starting at voltage and amperage, starting at the same time, that goes to the next guy. And he puts his stuff into it, and it goes to the next guy. So everybody down the line has a combination of all the bad stuff between them and the power company or the substation. Yeah. That means the first guy doesn't get charged very much for his power. The last guy pays a bundle. So what I'm getting at. I don't is, know what happened, but it's like you backed away from your mic or something. Oh, okay. What I'm getting at is all of Still this. Still not bad, getting it. Hello? Can, we, can you hear me now? I hear you, but it's like you went I'm, out. I'm not hearing any changes. Levels. Just I'm nothing hearing but mumble? Fine. No, I hear you fine, Larry. Oh, okay. Just interjecting because Rob's saying he can't. Hmm. How about that? Okay. That's better. I think it was on my end. <laughs> yeah, it must have been. Bye, Sorry guys. Sorry about that. Ah, no problem. Continue. <laughs> Uh, so all the odd harmonics that go into your line come through it on the negative wire, on the neutral wire, on the ground wire. Right. That, that's that the transmits, return. Yeah, that's the return that that gathers up all the bad stuff from all your neighbors all the way back to the power company. So if you're testing a device, you're not providing that device with harmonic free energy you're providing that device with all the harmonics from all your neighbors so you can't tune your device you can't tune the components on your device without a whole lot of extra trouble so yeah, it's... in your in your test facility they make an isolated ground receptacle that means that that ground wire to that receptacle does not go back to your main power system. That right. goes to an alternative ground system, which could be a huge chunk of metal that had a great deal of mass that you use uh -huh. as a frame ground, a second reference ground. Okay. Uh, which is what I would suggest. Uh, you could run that to a ground rod outside, uh -huh. which would give you two different potentials and allow that to that system to bleed off anywhere it had to. Uh, but that you you can't tune harmonically the equipment in your circuit 
without having clean power come to it. And that's either a power supply that does not have the ground and the neutral hooked together. There's there's normally a, a little tab that you can put between the two of them on a power supply. Take that off. Um, okay. But that's that's the only two ways you can get clean power for your devices. And well, that's if you're using a power supply. What if you're using a battery? If you're using a battery, that's clean power. Okay. Yeah. Or but a solar you cell. Charge it. Because, I mean, three volts. I mean, you can get three yeah, volts from a solar cell. Yeah, you can use a solar cell for that as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's okay, clean. just just Yeah, it's fun. just... Just the electronics from your neighbor on the uh, grid system. Yeah, like if you're using a power supply like out of a computer. Yeah. Yeah. Or, a, or an actual testing type power supply, a, a lab. Yeah. Yeah, a 12 volt power supply or a 30 volt power supply, whatever you've got. Right. Uh. uh and remember now that there's going to be a different potential between the ground wire in your panel and the ground that, that you're providing for your equipment and your testing. From a straight ground rod. Yeah, from a straight ground rod. So don't get between those two. That will bite you. Well, that's a good rule of thumb. Anytime you're dealing with electricity, don't never touch... Matter of fact, most electricians will tell you keep one hand behind your back. Yep. Yep. Don't let Only it use go one hand. Don't body. ever let your other hand wander around. Yep. I got yelled at for that actually. <laughs> yep. If you if you do it through your hand, it goes from finger to finger. If you do yeah, it between so. one hand and the other, it goes through your heart and kills you. Exactly. So. Yep. Safety first. Yeah, so yeah, never never touch more than one thing at a time when working on electrical things. Uh, and once you get these coils uh, operating, do not lean over the hole. Don't point that hole at anything you love that's alive. Right. Uh, there'll be a, a high magnetic beam coming out of that and forming a tornado going up and down. Right. Or side to side, whichever way you're mounted your coil. Now, on the 8-inch coil, how powerful is that one? I mean, as far as the <laughs> that magnetic beam part of it. The 8-inch coil has a... Uh, in, the, in the standard 8-inch toroid that's just wrapped round and round uh, on an iron core, that develops about 4,000 milligauss of, of uh, magnetic energy in, the, in a vortex. Okay, good. Baseline. Baseline. The 8-inch coil that you will be building will develop 18,000 milligauss. Wow. So it, it more than squares the, the number of... of uh, well, I call them magnets, the magnetic field. The strength of the magnetic field. Yeah. The magnetic river. Yeah. Nobody ever talks about that. I I see magnetism, and, and I know this isn't right, they are not particles, but I envision them as being particles that are rectangular and twisted. And... The North Pole goes out and twists in one direction. South Pole goes out and twists in the opposite direction. Interesting. And, that, and as they go through the nine point, as they go through the center of the toroid, and everything is a toroidal shape, as they go through the center, they straighten out, and that spin is turned the other way. Oh, interesting. Uh, that's that's just huh. the way I envision magnetism. That, yeah, no, that that that's. Perfect. <laughs> that's how I. That's the way I I think about things too. Yeah. I like to envision things like that. And I'm but the one that smokes pot, Rob. Really? What? What? <laughs> you got pot? <laughs> no. I, you bring it up for everybody? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just what you guys are talking about. It's a little bit over my head. 
but you each understand right. it. So it's well, over my head too, but I, I, you're figuring I it out it. as you go. I can't. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just wanted and, to and check little in. things like the description he just gave me helps mm-hmm. helps me to envision. It, it's not yeah. the actual yeah. physical part of it, yeah. but it, it's an envisioning of yep. how things work. Because mad you know, scientists and, think alike. <laughs> and yeah, okay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, bottom line is, is if you're going to do any testing on uh, and you want to have any kind of accuracy, you need to have an isolated ground, which consists of a ground rod or a large uh, iron object that will... Iron, iron, copper, aluminum, any big mass of conductor. Conductor, okay. So you... Um, what about like a car? Does that count, or just because it's not actually it's it's uh, insulated from the ground? Yeah, that would yeah you could hook it to your car, I suppose. I never <laughs> I never thought of that. I wouldn't really want a a good direct short spark going to my car. <laughs> I, I was just thinking more along the size wise. I mean, how big of a piece of you know would an anvil work? Oh, yeah, an anvil would be perfect. Okay. Yeah. I'm just trying to get an idea of what would, you know, you say a large conductive object, metal, iron, copper, whatever. Um, so just trying to get an idea of what large meant in that respect, in that context. Yeah. Uh, you're going to be carrying 30 amps. So yeah. what, whatever you put it through needs to be able to at least handle twice that much in a short. Oh, okay. So some double lot wire would work. Yeah. Yeah, you could use a great huge chunk of wire on the wall and just okay. hook all your ground rods to it or all your ground wires to it. Okay. <clears throat> and of and course that, that, And that just flattens out the, all the interference. It's coming in from the, and so you eliminate the neutral coming from the power company altogether. You eliminate the ground. The ground. Yeah. But not the but, neutral. But not the neutral. It's got to have the neutral to give you power. Right, right. Yeah, the neutral just carries the load back to the panel. Did somebody call me? I missed something. Okay. Okay, so so it's just the ground. Um and that'll that'll uh, okay, I'm trying to understand. So you so you tie the neutral and your isolated ground together? No. No, 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 no. Uh okay. You you've got a black wire and a white wire and a and a bare copper wire coming from the panel going to that plug. Uh-huh. You do you do not connect that bare ground wire. Okay, you, so you just the just the bare ground wire goes to your isolated ground. That bare ground wire you do not use it at all. You run another ground wire from the ground connection on that plug to your big chunk of metal. An additional, a different ground wire that does not come from your mains power supply. Okay. So on the plug, you mean the receptacle that you're plugging your yeah. your devices into? Yeah, and in this country, they're orange. They're orange. Yeah. That how, that tells you there's an isolated ground plug in for electronic equipment. Oh, okay. It's a special plug you want to go buy from, from the yeah. hardware store. Yeah, it does not have an internal ground to it. The neutral and the ground wire are not connected in any way, anywhere. Okay. And so you're basically, so you're cutting off the ground coming from the power company altogether, and you're putting your isolated ground in there. Right. And as a replacement. I get yeah. the concept, yeah. 
Yeah, you're just you're just. I'm thinking about wiring stuff forward. up directly, and you're describing the receptacles. <laughs> well, yeah, I, was, I wasn't going that deep. <laughs> so, okay, that makes sense now. Yeah, and that that'll give you a mains power supply for your equipment, but not the without all the interference. Yeah, without all the harmonics, you'll be getting better power. Right. And then, of course, if you use a battery, that's going to be clean and all the right. other stuff. Well, I figured just for a three volt uh, uh, supply, uh, I would also be curious. Uh, maybe you've done this. Have you ever run it off a three volt battery and run something and seen how long it would last on a on like two double A's or something? A volt and a half battery, and it ran for a year and a half. And then I just took the under load and it down. The way it had a 12 volt light bulb on it. 12 volt light bulb, like a car. Yeah. A yeah turn a car. signal bulb or something. Yeah. Okay. And it ran for a year and a half on a on a single AA battery. Yeah. Well, no, it was a size. Uh, it was a D cell. D cell. Yeah. But it's still so a year and a half on one D cell running a, a car a car. Uh, light bulb. Light bulb, yeah. Yeah. A tail light bulb. Yeah. And those those are pretty bright. <laughs> I mean that's a light. Yeah, that that's a light. And and that was constant, so if you're turning it on and off you're gonna get more if than it, a year and a half. Right? Yeah. I'm uh, assuming on, it was constant. On, yeah, because it's a direct resistance light bulb. If it was fluorescent then it would take more power turning it on and off. Depends on how many times you did it. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, because it has to power up. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that right there alone is, is, is pretty, I mean, I know it's, it doesn't sound like much, but when you think about it, a year and a half of, of running a 12 volt uh, light bulb, Well, that's 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 the most basic thing that this can do. The very most basic. Yeah, that's uh, what I'm saying. Just the very most basic thing is is pretty amazing. I mean, um, you could use that as a, as a uh, a battery charger, a top off charger. Oh yeah, oh you yeah, know, or a maintenance charger. And just with a D cell battery. Mm-hmm. And it'll keep your char- car charged up for a year <laughs> or whatever. Mm-hmm. And the the 12 circuit coil, I'm getting more and more impressed with that. Uh, the 6 circuit is proof of concept. Right. The, the 12 circuit and up is what it can do. The 12 circuit produces panel power at... Uh, now, this is wire, just wire around an empty hollow donut uh-huh. that's made out of made out of plastic uh-huh. with a haul back array in the vortex, mm-hmm. stationary, not moving. Right. Out of that, if there were any power, it would be DC power. It would be direct current power. Right. With the hallback array in it, we're getting 12 volts AC, and the ground is a human thumb. Okay, you're going to have to explain that. Okay, when when we hook it up with a 12-circuit panel, and this we hooked it up to get the highest magnetic field, which is series. Okay. We hooked every other circuit up in series. And every other circuit up in series, both that gave you two ends. Okay. I hooked a meter to that. I hooked the hot wire, the, the red clamp of the meter, onto the wire. And on the black clamp of the meter, the back or the black contact, you put your yeah. thumb, and the meter shows 12 volts AC. Oh. That's due to the resonance between the magnetic field, 
of the Hallback Array and the circuit uh, geometry of the coil. Okay. Another That's major, it. major point. Okay, so let me back. Well, hold on before you move. Okay. You're okay. So you got this. Uh, okay, it's, it's twelve circuit coil. Okay, so you wired six six circuits each together to come up with two leads. You grab one lead with with the uh, or you hook one lead to your red uh, positive lead on your bolt leader, and you just touch okay. the other lead with your hand. Grab it with your thumb. Yeah. And that gives you 12 volts AC. But when you're not grabbing it with your thumb, it goes back to zero. Well, yeah, it's got to have a ground point. You can touch that. So it's grounding. Up. So it's grounding to you. Yeah. Yeah, you're providing the ground for it. Okay. Or so you could hook it, you could clip it onto the so table. So what happens? What what happens when you hook it to a, an actual? Ground, I, like a ground rod, a real ground. You still get twelve volts AC. Same, 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 same deal. Okay. Yep. All right. I just had to get that all clear. Yeah. And I mean, go ahead. So, and when you're tuning your circuits, as as wire is drawn and they they stretch it out, it's it's never the same diameter. Actually, it's just right. it's average. Consistent. Yeah. It, yeah. As thin spots and thick spots. Right. So to get the exact resistance of wire, you weigh it. Well, okay. most folks don't take into consideration as that wire is being drawn, that gives it a specific polarity. Okay? Okay. So when, when you wrap your coils... One circuit is clockwise. The circuit attached to it next to it is counterclockwise or anticlockwise. Okay. Therefore, when you pull your wire off the coil, your your spool, that's got a, a certain polarity to it. That goes on your clockwise coil uh, circuit. The next section that you pull off, you have to turn end for end to wrap the counterclockwise. Uh-huh. So that the polarity of the wire remains constant in both positive and negative direction. So you got balance. You got balance. You got harmony. Okay. That That makes sense. So what we do, we pull off one length of wire put a piece of tape on both sides of it and cut it in the middle. And that, that way the black end is always the beginning. Okay. So like on a 100-foot uh, spool that I've got, I pull the whole thing off or well, pull you're, it in half. You're, you're going to take a piece of string to start with and wind one wrap of one coil. Okay. Of, of one circuit. One circuit. And, and that's going to give you the length of wire that you have to have to go around that coil. And then you're going to add a little bit to it so that you've got connection you got points at both ends. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So I can just cut off. I can cut them uh, to length. And just arrange them as I as I cut them. Yeah. Tape tape one end. And yeah. 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 Just, just identify the start. And, I, yeah. Identify the positive end. We'll call the the lead coming out of the spool the positive end and and mark that. I get it. Okay. And so so. One wrap around an eight-inch coil is, is probably what, just a couple of feet, or not even that. Um, I don't remember on that. It's been so long ago. It, yeah, it's it's not very far. Yeah. Uh, we did that in in a thirty-six foot room, so 
it's not anywhere near that much. Okay. Uh, yeah. It, it took it took a hundred feet to wrap it. Total. Yeah, total, which is point that's, four. That's point four six ohms of wire per circuit. Point four six ohms per circuit. Per circuit. So what that means is that one volt through one ohm of wire yields one amp. That means that if you put one volt through one circuit, you should get 0.46 amps. Okay. But you get 10. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, this is UL1007 solid wire rated. Oh, underwriter U- laboratory. UL1007. Yeah. Whatever that means. It just means that it won't shock you if it doesn't go over voltage. The wire conforms to UL and mil spec specifications. Ooh, wee, that means that it's average size. <laughs> Excellent uniformity. Anyways, uh, continue. Uh, what was uh, so that's uh, setting up the ground for your for your uh, testing facilities. Yeah. Was, uh, there, was there anything else for that? Yeah, there's a whole bunch more to that. Okay. Oh, continue uh, on there. You need clean rubber mats to stand on. Right. Okay. And you need to, I'm sure all the electronic guys know, ground yourself to your work surface. Right. You want, you want to maintain your potential as the same potential as the equipment you're working on. Right. That way you're never a potential. Yeah, you're, you're, there, there's never a difference and you won't get shocked. Right. It means it's Yeah, I'm used to working with nice. a lanyard uh, doing computer work. Yeah, yeah. It's the same idea. You want to be the same potential as what you're working on. Right. And all the electronics guys know that already. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you don't want your ground rod system to be the same as your lightning rod system. Uh, right. So, let's see what else. Um, when you're harmonically balancing your systems and the different lengths of wire that you use to connect the different components on your boards are going to change the frequency. So you've got to take that into consideration. Okay. Uh, So that means you've got your leads coming off your coil and you're going to run it like on the 18 inch coils, what you're talking about, the ones you're running into a modulator that, that gives you your, your frequency, your 54 hertz. Right. And so the leads coming to that, say would say the, the positives on one side of the board and the negatives on the long, other end of the board, and it's farther away, but you want to make that shorter lead longer anyway so that they both match so you so you maintain balance. Yeah. Does that sound right? Yeah, you got to have the same resistance all the way through. Right. Okay, that makes sense. Um. Where do we go from here? Uh, well, I think that uh, covered that pretty much. Yeah, um, I am. I am just about to. Uh, I about have all my questions answered. I think I'm just about there on how to do it. Okay, let's Maybe go into, explain the one four seven two eight five. Yeah, let's go into how to wrap it. Yeah. Um, Magnetic fields cannot cross themselves at anything other than 180 degrees or 90 degrees. If they they cross anything other than that, then that's going to create an eddy current, which simply means it's going to heat up in that spot and cost you money to operate. It draws more amperage to do the same job. Okay, so... 
these coils eliminate the eddy currents. So, right, that's the whole point. That's the whole point. Mark the perimeter of your coil zero through 300, or yeah, zero back to 360 degrees. Mark every compass right. point on your coil on the outside okay. equator. Okay. Is there an easy way to do that? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I have an I I have a good idea how to do it. Well, you're mainly getting to the ten points, right? The one ten twenty yeah every what, ten degrees. Yeah, every, every that's what you're really degrees. looking for, right? Yeah, you're, yeah, you're looking for every ten degrees. So I can print out a compass rose on a piece of paper and lay it over my coil and just mark zero, ten, twenty, thirty, forty. Uh, maybe I did ours with a spanner. You you find out what each dimension it needs to be uh, for 10 degrees on that coil. Yeah. And, and put and your you just jump, jump from yeah. point to point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that way, I tried it just a thousand times without using a spanner, just using a compass. And the width yeah. of the the width width of the pencil line screwed everything up every single time. Huh. So then I went to the spanner and everything worked out. So I'm not sure. Well, anyway, uh, the width of the pencil line. Yeah. So what exactly did you? As it adds up, thirty six widths of a pencil line is a long way off. But if okay. You know what a compass rose is, right? A compass rose? You're talking yeah, about what you can make with a compass, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm talking about like on a uh it's a sailing term. It's it's yeah you ever seen a navigation chart for sailing? Oh, okay, that that okay, yeah, I know what that is. Okay, a compass rose is the compass ro uh, compass indicator on there showing you where north is and and yeah. all the degrees of the compass. Well, you can print one of those out on a piece of paper, and you can size it up, and I can size it up to where it's just a little bit over eight inches, so I can set my donut right on top of it, and I can go around it, and yeah, and make I, the marks. I was think, I was thinking a mechanical compass with a point on one end and a pencil on the other that you draw a circle with. Oh no, no, yeah, no, no, that compass rose is just a yeah. I understand a, a depiction of of a, of the compass degrees, all the degrees. Yeah, and so you can just go off of that, anyways. So, so mark your mark your degrees out, right? And, and number uh, every ten degrees, one, two, three, all the way around, and then lower those down to one through nine. If it's twelve, that's one plus two is a number three. Okay. Right. So you know how to do that. That's vortex math. Right. Or numerology, whatever. Yeah. Uh, so once you've got that done, then your pattern is one. Start at, start at your first one. Go to four, which is from, from the outside equator at one. Go inside the donut and around the back side of the donut to four, come over the top at four, go inside the donut, and around outside the donut, back to seven, go inside okay. the donut, and back to the outside. Okay, so it's going to be, okay. That gives you a triple Mobius with one wire, and you're going to do that nine times around uh, okay, that's just what it comes out to is nine times. Yeah, and that's you're going to keep going one four seven one four seven one four seven, one, four, seven until you get all the way around back to where you started. Yeah, nine times. Okay, and it takes nine times of doing that to get back to the beginning. Well, no, you that's when you one four seven back to one. That's one winding on a nine winding circuit. I'm running on a nine winding circuit. Yeah, that that's and your wire is still really long. 
your wire is still really long. And you keep doing that nine times around until you use up all your wire. Okay. I guess I'm still confused. Okay, you, you've got one wire that's, that's nine feet long, and okay. it takes one foot to get around the coil. You begin, and when you get one foot around it, that's one winding of a nine winding circuit. When you get okay. around it nine times, then you're done. Okay. All with that same one piece of wire. Okay. So. Okay, that, that gives you one circuit. Okay. Circuit number two that begins at 20 degrees, circuit number two is wrapped from the other end. It goes counterclockwise. That goes, and that's where your wire has to be turned over end for end. This goes from 2 to 8 to 4, or wait a minute, five. 2 eight to 5, sorry, and then back to 2 the same way. Over nine the times. top, through the hole, nine times. Over the top, through the hole, around the back. Over the top, through the hole, around the back. Over the top. Now, when you say counterclockwise, does that mean, okay, so you start, or, okay, let's say we're and starting. Started, and started, instead of going from 2 to 5 to 8, you go from 2 to 8 to 5. Right. But, okay, so you start on the, out, the outside the equator, you go in through the thing. Okay, so I'm visioning it going up to the left, Okay. So I'm looking I'm looking straight down at the donut at the bottom. I start my number one right there. I go up and over in, out to four, and up and over to seven, and do that nine times. Right. And then, okay, on my second one, I start at two. Do I go to the right or to the left, or do is it just the transitioning two, of two. the wire that you're calling counter? It's two to eight to to five and you're still going to the left with it but this is a counterclockwise according to the polarity of your wire so and it's the wire that's counterclockwise so you're just all that means is you're flipping the wire over when you say counterclockwise you're using the other end of the of the wire that you already marked yeah Cir circuit one will actually be wrapped clockwise and circuit two will actually be wrapped counterclockwise at circuit two you flip the coil over okay circuit one you have one side is on top for circuit two you flip the coil over and go from the from what would be the underside when you had the one on top this now Two goes over the top when it's flipped over. That gives you a counterclockwise okay. rotation on the wire. Okay, so the, the flipping over is, a, is the missing element that I didn't have. Yeah, I left that out. <laughs> it's, it's been a long time since I've wired these things. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's kind of a critical piece of the puzzle, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, it, it, it's really yeah someone, someone end up because uh, just because uh, if you go, if you start, if you didn't flip it over and you went to the left, you'd be doing the same thing. Only the wire would be flipped. Yeah, but if you flip it over, now you flip it over left to right or top to bottom. Top to bottom. Okay, so you flipped it over top. So you're actually starting on the other side of the donut. No, you're starting right next to the 10 degrees. You're starting at 20 degrees, but you're going the other direction. Well, if you flip it top to bottom and then, well, yeah, you still start at 20 degrees. Okay, I see. Either way, it doesn't matter. That's why a CNC machine to make these silly things is going to be way expensive. Oh, yeah. Well, they do have uh, metallic 3D printers. Mm-hmm. 3D printers that print metal, but it needs to it needs to be a dual extruder. It needs to print metal and plastic. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, sure. It's they do have that. I, I'm pretty sure. But, boy, yeah, you're talking money there. Um, yeah. Oh, I did see something interesting I wanted to tell you about uh, when I was looking at the filaments. They have a carbon fiber filament. Yeah, that's going to be real interesting to play with. Uh, and they can now extrude graphene as well. Oh, neat. So, oh, so that's, oh, that's going to be even more fun. That's that's a semiconductor. Yeah, you bet it is. Yeah, with, with crystalline graphene, we can do lots of things. Interesting. And, and you know graphene is just crystallized wood, right? No, I didn't know that. If you have two chunks of graphene and tap them together, it sound like you're tapping glass together. All you've done is removed everything that is not crystalline out of the wood. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah. And hemp fiber being long and single-strand fibers makes the best graphene. And you don't break that. You don't crush that up into powder. You use that as as it is. Imagine that. Yep. And it's more conductive when you don't crush it into powder. Huh. Just a little thing for the beginners. Uh, you can make paint out of it with the powder, and, and that'll work real well. But the powder itself is really hard to carry a charge. Right, right. Well, that's because they're all separated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Particles are, there's a, it doesn't look like it, but there's a giant space in between them. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, and if, if you want to gather some of that up that you spilt on the floor, just blow up a balloon and rub it in your hair and run it over the floor. It'll pick up every bit of it. Right. Uh, I love science. <laughs> it's fun. It is. Um, but we're we are uh, halfway through the show. It's and first hour is up. Wow. Flash, you got any questions? So hey, I was I was muted. I put him to sleep. No, <laughs> I, was, I was muted for your conversational approval. <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, because I was burning my pipe on the other side and chatting in the text room. I know, and now I want to burn mine a little bit, but, so you take take over here. Yeah, me. but Larry, you know, don't... See, when I don't understand something, I don't take it as a personal thing. I've never had a deep interest in what you guys do. But I see what the results could be, because I'm kind of artist, kind of minded. So this is just, um, it's like an art project I'm looking on. And you're going to guide Rob through the process to create what you discovered. I think that's pretty interesting. You know, on an... Yeah, on a, awesome, and I really appreciate it. Yeah, in a dork, you know, the dork in me is all over this. I just don't understand all the details and the algebra. But I understand the principles behind what you talk about. So I'm not left in the dirt completely, just a little bit. Well, when you made a proper coil, it is a work of art. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's a very meticulous uh, process. Yeah, now, you, you, we've got, you got uh, and, and like we just discovered, one yeah. little detail makes all the difference. If you do, you got to flip the thing over before you do the other, coil, the other circuit. And Rob, we've got That's, Freedom's Network over there. So maybe one yeah. of you two guys should open up a, like a group for people that do listen to you to go to visually see shit. Maybe uh, make a document of what you're doing, the process, something. Give the yeah. you know give the brainiacs something to play. Well, with. that's that's going to be uh, really up to Larry if he wants to. Yeah. Do that. Yeah, you can do that. Show pictures of your progress. Okay. Show hey. Your now, you see why I like to butt in and, and say the unsayable, Robert? Because <laughs> you're yeah. usually against what I come out and say, and Larry's usually for it. Because <laughs> your logic and reason, and Larry just doesn't seem to give I'm, a well, shit. Well, I, I, I don't presume to be, you know, this is Larry's thing. And yeah, I, but I'm a pushy Jew, and I'm going to come on here and have ideas. And you know what? Yeah. Every every and, now and again, they're good ideas. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. You know, I'm just not one to presume to do that, you know. Uh, no, you're making the fucking whereas, coils, or there see there's the step I can't take. I don't I don't have that deep rooted uh, I think I've I think I've got a good idea of how it works. Right. Well I'd sure like uh, you to take I mean, pictures of the process be, and I should get a picture of us still printing. And open up a um open up a page on that Freedom Net Freedoms Network site. So that we can, you know, if we want yeah, to go I'm look, we can see it. I have a, I have or a, RLO. Hmm, hmm, hmm. You know, I for us little RLO. people that don't do all the big sites, because I don't like doing the big sites. They make my head hurt. Yeah, well, I, I'm good, and I'm doing good to do the little sites. <laughs> I don't hear that. I'm uh, I'm not uh, big on all that stuff myself. Well, it, Larry, it was obvious to me as you were explaining certain bits and bobs to Rob that when you explained it to him, just in words, he would get a visual and see what you were saying. So, yeah, I hope. Um, and this is just listening to you guys. So I'm not even, I, you know, if I was in the same room, it would be a whole lot better. But not much different. Just uh, a little. Because seeing well, is yeah, believing it, it, and hearing stuff, wow. Yeah, it's a, well, yeah, it does make it harder to uh, to actually have to try to describe something just in words without your hands. Because <laughs> I mean, just having your hands here, you can sit here and you can make an imaginary, you know, hold your hands up in a donut shape and and say, okay, you start from here and go there, and then this is how you do it, and around here, and okay. All right, that would have, you know, it would have taken 20 minutes off the conversation just to have that visual aid. <laughs> but having to do it, you know, long distance, just over through words is, is makes things harder. So, yeah, having some diagrams and pictures and with little arrows and descriptions and, yeah, that would make things a lot easier. And I assume that's what's being put into the instruction manual, right, Larry? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we we haven't even gotten past the safety features on the instruction manual yet. Yeah. Uh, we've we've set up the the test facilities, and there's two guys with sheds that they're powering up with the equipment, so they're not even attached to the main grid. Right. Uh, yeah, it's, nice. yeah, we've got some really smart people that are, are doing this stuff. I don't have the facilities or the money for them, and these guys do. Uh, right. We've got, got one electronics guy that has his own electronics company that makes new circuit boards, and okay. he's just going nuts with it. And it, it all works down. To one two dollar and fifty cent board to handle the modulation is the only thing that's going to go wrong with this within at least a hundred years. And if we can beef those things up, then maybe it won't ever go wrong. Yeah. Speaking of beefing up, that reminds me of a question I have. Uh oh. Um. Uh, two questions, actually. One, of, first of all, uh, marine application. Uh, I don't, I don't know how much you know about marine grade things like marine grade electronics. They're they're built a certain way, and they have certain uh, things in them. How will this hold up in a saltwater environment? Type question. Uh. Depends on what the Faraday cage is made out of, but it should not affect it. Uh, it would only affect the circuitry on the on the circuit board, uh-huh. and like you say, marine grade and military grade, uh, that might make it where this will never go down. Right. So, oh, and then the second question is is movement. Um, uh, the hallback array on the 18-inch coil, is it mounted to something solidly, or is it just set in there? Or? It's just set in there. 
okay, so if you're like on a sailboat, that's not going to work. It would have to be mounted. Uh, the the hallback array is fitted into a cone. The magnets are fitted into a cone that goes right into the vortex. Okay. So it's held in place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that'll that'll give you your twelve volts AC. So, so knocking okay. around in 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 eight foot seas is not going to knock it out. No, not at all. Not at all. Okay. Uh, and so. and and that. That particular arrangement is only designed for powering the other coils. And the other coils are just, oh. don't have the callback array in them? No, the other coils are simply induced. Just straighten coils that run yeah. off of them. Yeah, you put that, gotcha. you put that 12 volts AC into one coil with a magnet, a ball magnet in it, and that uh-huh. ball magnet spins and induces into however many other coils you want, depending on the, there's there's way to do that and induce as many coils as you want. Just like setting up a Tesla tower with three pancake coils, but you don't use pancake coils anymore in all the circuitry. You simply use our coils. I, I have a right. question for the notes, Rob. Okay. What is the inch size of the coil you're working on is it eight inch eight total okay. eight inch that's thank you that's what we're calling an eight inch coil and and i believe it's a six circuit coil yeah it's a six circuit coil that's a two three eight relationship a ratio yeah it's, it's a two inch donut hole a three inch thick donut for a total of eight inches uh, well, I'll get with you specifically to work on that line in the text after the show. Okay. But I've got notes going on, so you know we have Excellent. some record of what we talked about here. Right, right. But I just kept them real loose, so if you want to add to it, we can get more specific on that. When we're done before I send them off to Green. Cool, cool. Yeah. But, you know, the, the okay. one... One thing I like you guys to always mention, too, is this is definitely not for beginners. This is like, you know, it's not yeah, recommended yeah. that you go attack your shit without knowing what you're doing. you got to know something. Yeah. People are bored right now, and they're in lockdown. Well, I think it's pretty safe. So, the people that don't understand it probably wouldn't be able to wrap it right to begin with. So. Well, I wouldn't want to uh, encourage anybody to cause themselves more harm than good trying to be smart because they well i think that's why larry is is exercising an abundance of caution and and getting the safety features and manual part of it done before he releases it out there because yeah uh being jewish (laughs) from what he said already this thing could very easily be turned into a weapon as well Oh yeah, that's and, what you know, I'm afraid of. That's why yeah. we don't have a patent on it because sure. it, uh, I've already had to visit. Yeah, it will be classified. Boy, just about anything could be turned into a weapon. Well, I would I would be willing to bet that they already have it, and that's why your patents denied because it's already patented. They're just not going to tell you that. Yeah, think about it. You got a real Iron Man suit now that's powered by an eight inch coil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow, and that and that in future will get smaller. Oh yeah, yeah. somebody will figure out. Oh yeah, somebody will figure out how to how to uh, force multiply it. Well, all these all these coils now that you can print on a molecular level in metal, hmm. all these coils can replace the coils and every bit of electronic equipment with something that's cooler, no iron core, lighter weight, less yeah. material to produce the same amount of amperage. Right. So yeah, it's yeah. it's a it's a revolution in electronics that they've probably had for a long time. That they're not a lot, we're not allowed to have because of the potential uses for it. Um, yeah, for your which, safety. Well, it's yeah. for their safety. <laughs> no, it's well. <laughs> they don't want anybody else having what they got. There sure is a lot of hoopla, big talkers about you know, changing shit that never do nothing when they have an opportunity. <laughs> telling you 
Well, yep. if, this, if this gets open sourced, if, if we can get it out to the general public, mm -hmm. it's going to be a game changer. And it, we'll sell kits for the people that don't want to wind their own coils. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've, we've got a 3D printed model now that has got a ridge on it where you need to start your wire. Wow. You, you can't mess up. Idiot proof for people like me. That's cool. I know, well, they wouldn't I give like me that. that. I call it rare. <laughs> Poor Rob. <laughs> you have to notch it yourself. Get your yeah. Dremel gun out, Rob. And it's just got a little extra layer of material where where the wire needs to be, and you start next to that, and you can't mess up. Well, how long do you expect it to take Rob to wrap it properly to get the finished product? A month. Hmm. If he's dedicated. Ooh. You hear that, Rob? Yeah, so talk to me about six months then. <laughs> <laughs> it's it probably not that long. It'll take yeah. you about eight hours to wrap a circuit for your first one, and then yeah. maybe you can do it in six. Yeah, once you get the first one down and right, and then you have a guide. Yeah. yeah so how, sort of how many coils did you make so that if something should, you know, get broken, perhaps you wouldn't <laughs> be stuck. Is that before or after we got it right? No, I just meant he, he had to print the, the basic component to wrap, right? Oh, you're talking to me? Yeah. Well, you're the one making it, Larry. Larry. Oh, I haven't even I, I haven't even finished printing the first one yet. But right, that's what I mean. See, I'm Jewish. I would make six of them. <laughs> you know, if you're gonna well, have I can one, only do one at a time. So. Yeah, but you're not. You got to think like a Jew, man. I'm telling you, if you if you're oh, gonna have one, me. you need I, six. I, well, this isn't even the right material. This is the PLA, <laughs> which I don't know if it's gonna handle the heat. But um, no, I'm I'm kidding, Ron. Run. I I knew this. Well, was I know, gonna... but I've I've got some ABS plastic already ordered. So yeah, I do plan on making more. I'll, I'll just stop at one. Yeah. Now, wait till you find out if your form is going to work for you. Yeah. And oh then, yeah. I want to make. I, I want to build that. one and and make sure I've got a working unit. I'm how, not going to go. How precise? Up before okay. I know. But how precise do these things get as far as measurement goes? On the three D printer. Mm hmm. On what I you're creating to wrap wire around. What, I mean, is this thing like? Just perfect or what? <laughs> what? What's your tolerance on your printer? Oh, it's <laughs> printing it. Uh, it's using a 0 0.2 millimeter layer uh, thickness. So 0 0.2, 0 0.2 resolution, 0 0.2 millimeter resolution. Um, it's coming out pretty smooth. So this is some uh, really technical stuff. It's coming out fairly smooth. I mean, it's not. It's not going to be. There's no bumps or anything in it. It's smooth. Smooth enough for wrapping a wire around. <laughs> the first one I made was out of plaster cast. Yeah. Yeah. You just. You just. Okay. Yeah. It's going to be better than that. You don't. You. There won't be uh, no sanding or anything to be due. <laughs> No, it's it's coming out pretty much perfectly round and smooth. Yep. I did, we started out caveman style. Yeah. That would be a real pain. That's the whole reason I spent the money on a 3D printer, because I didn't want to do that. <laughs> yep, it was a summer in the backyard throwing plaster. Wow. And see, that's what, you know, people will never know all of the time and effort and hours and hours of, of thought and, and trial and error and stuff that you put into this. Well, I find it more interesting when I do something myself. Yeah. If I'm interested in it, you know, then hearing about it, other people doing that. And then there's times like oh. this where I'm, I'm way more interested in the finished result than I am in the process to get to it. 
And my right. two partners telling me that I'm crazy all the way around. Oh, yeah? Why? Because those don't work. You can't do it like that. Nobody does it like that. It won't work. Oh, you're talking about before you got one that worked? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, I've, that's I've what we do. I've got two partners that were very skeptical. But that's what we do. We, yeah. we bring doubt yeah. to your life so you can... Uh, have to fucking explain it to us. <laughs> some people, some people, well, I believe I'm this. I'm quite used to people telling me my way of thinking is, is wrong. <laughs> yeah, but they're telling you some, how they see you, so who cares what they see? It's not their business what you, how you see anything. It's none of my business what they see. Nah, mine either. I but don't we're, care. We're doing a talk, <laughs> we do talk shows on the, like the dork table. And this is a different, thing. I, I was hoping that we'd get what we're getting here. A little instruction and somebody that has the understanding of the instruction. And then me. I don't yeah. really get all of it, but I get some of it. So yeah. I feel kind of good. I'm getting somewhere with this. I'm learning a, a little well, bit more as I go. You know, the fun part is for me is, is all of the applications that this can be used for uh, everything. There's so much, uh, and I'm sure there's stuff we haven't even touched on yet that that uh, would is it, it totally changed the the human dynamic. Limitless energy technologies. Yeah. Well, I got a question. Because I think the uh, the vibration and the frequency concept does get very uh, doesn't get a lot of attention. I couldn't find a way to say that out. I wasn't planning on it, but it just came to mind. And I know that you two both know a lot about that compared to me. So I thought, hey, let's throw vibration and frequency at you two and see what you can come up with. Oh, okay. The 12 circuit coil is a quarter wave antenna. Woo, how about that? Now tell them what a quarter wave antenna is. Okay, a quarter wave antenna looks uh, looks like a T, but it's made out of one piece of wire. Okay. The wave, the wave hits it and a quarter of the distance on one of the sides of the T is the quarter of a wave of the wavelength of whatever frequency that you're looking for. That frequency hits that one arm of the T and is transmitted as power down through to the point of that T, the bottom point. It also is collected on the other wing of the T and transmit it down to that point. So as the sign goes positive and negative, you're getting a, a charge from each direction down into that point on that quarter wave antenna. That's the way your your antenna on your CB radios work. Whatever the wavelength that they want, your antenna is either that length or has a coil of wire in it somewhere to yeah. get it to that length. And these 12-circuit uh -huh. panel or coils are simply quarter-wave antennas, and you're able to take capacitors out of systems because of it. You're able to take diodes out of systems because of it. You're able to take uh, um, brain fart. Um, Transistors? No, it's the diodes. Go, it's the four diodes that go around in a circle to keep the power going from coming back. Capacitors? Uh, no, you've already taken the capacitors out with it. Oh, um, um, oh man! <laughs> rectifiers? Rectifiers, bridge rectifiers. Thank you, thank you. Be able to take the bridge rectifiers out of it using nine of the circuits 
will replace one bridge rectifier. Okay. And that that's using the coil. And that means that these huge spikes that your electronic equipment is putting back into the line that's blowing your circuits, you can't blow the, well, you can, but it would take millions more volts than what you're going to be getting. One 12 volt supply with a bad system that's not balanced will give you a 3,000 volt return spike. Yeah. And that burns coils up. Yeah. But it, but it won't burn these up. It'll just sit there and eat them up. Yeah. It'll sit there and, and convert that charge into magnetic energy. So you'd have a big burst coming out of your your uh, Gorgon's eye. Yeah. So instead of waste, you've got reuse. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, you I'm like, figuring you this out. Rather than dump it. Hey, man. I'm going to make myself a diploma. Hang it on the wall. You, you think you're a Jew. I'm so cheap, I squeak. <laughs> well, now, now we've been locked down for our own damn good, babe. But you, you know what they got open in Freddy Town already? Jewelry stores, because you know that's an essential business. That's an essential thing. Must especially have. after having husbands and wives locked up for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> no, without your bling, you ain't no thing. <laughs> I'm looking at my wife across the room over there at the couch, and and <laughs> she still hasn't thrown anything at me. Yeah, but yeah, does she well, always swing the frying pan like that? You know, she was home two weeks before the shutdown. She, she'd already worked out a deal with her business to stop Excellent. going down to the office so much to waste time and get stuff done by doing it at home. <laughs> so... She's been locked she was down. already transitioning into work at home. Yeah, she was wanting it. <laughs> so, <laughs> what a problem. You know? uh, yeah. Damn. Well, now they've overdone it a little bit. Yeah. But uh, this will pass. You, we're in a really small, oh, yeah. call, small fucking country here, right? And these people will dance around the UN and the EU for a couple of weeks or whatever, and then things will go back to normal. Sodium chloride, NaCl, will cure, will kill any virus, and this is a virus. Get some oh, sodium yeah, nasal spray. That's why I brought it up, because you were telling me about that before the show. Yeah, Larry, sodium you've got nasal a, spray. You've got a good good brain with the medical stuff too, as well as the electrical. Uh, and, my grandmother yeah. could heal you out of her garden. There you go. Yeah. Well, you know, I've noticed uh, the the the, the uh, techno geek types are all into the health and stuff. Like, remember uh, uh, the Keeley Net guy? Uh, I never can remember his name. Well, <sighs> hey, Larry, is yeah, it, Larry, I got I, before I forget this. Is this possible to put us on a wavelength? to behave like we're ill where our bodies would react to a wavelength in symptoms of an illness is that that's some what sci-fi 5G is. okay that's what 5g is so i'm not crazy that is true 5g is a military patent for a sound producing weapon to control crowds right they can project a microwave at you that will make your skin feel like it's on fire and it won't kill you. It'll just make you run away. Yeah. They can produce a sound that will make you fall to your knees that you can't even hear. They can produce a sound that will make you take a poo on yourself. They can, the frequency can heal you or, or kill, kill you, you, depending on what they want. Well, yep. But see, we hear these harsh things about frequency but there's not a whole lot of simple guy uh, knowledge let's say you know it's not there common blunder of hope. <laughs> Grim says the brown sound <laughs> but you know <laughs> frequency and vibration are not common for like topics of conversation I don't think it, there are things that are taken 
too seriously in, in the spoken world. No? That's what I dealt with most of my working career. Uh, okay, and then you get into people that have work, uh, where it's math-related or science-related to some degree. And they're going to take you a little more seriously. But, you know, people like me that do artwork and unload trucks, I, I never was much about the science. I'm not denying it's there. I just don't give it the power that it's got over, over all these other people. Well, when I hear about something, I don't want to hear about it from the people that tell you about it. I want to do the research. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. Thanks for the tip. I'll check into that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I make it a point not to buy things that are advertised on the television because I'm insulted by the commercials. <laughs> yeah, I, I do that a lot. <laughs> wow. Uh, you rebel, I you. <laughs> I don't I don't think I could live without a DVR anymore so that I can fast forward through the commercials. Uh, I've found that since I've gotten a DVR, my mind is a whole lot more clear and less filled with garbage. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I don't need a DVR because I just quit watching TV altogether. That's but, a good idea. Oh, yeah, but uh, some of us are strictly internet. I, if, if there's anything on TV or, that I need to see, I can get it on the internet. Hey, maybe they've got me addicted to a wavelength, and I don't know it. When it comes to the television, you've set. heard of. I know Larry knows about it, but you have you heard of the Rife machine, the Rife frequency, Royal Raymond Rife. Me? I uh, know. Larry, you bet. I know Absolutely. you have. Uh, and the the reason that he wasn't accepted was that a few people died, and I can explain yep. that. When yep. Steve actually knows somebody that 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 did that because he he the guy was an idiot he he did it wrong he yelled it for way too long mm. at way too high power mm. and it killed him. Yeah. Uh, there's there's some good things and bad things about it. When every every organ in your body has a little bit different frequency, uh, everybody's frequency is within a certain bandwidth, but everybody is, has their own frequency like a fingerprint. Yeah. But your, your organs have their own frequencies as well. And if, say, you've got a liver problem, well, yeah, it's okay that you can go in and heal that liver, but you've got to, you've got to find out what the rest of the things are doing as well because healing that liver May What's the underlying cause of the around. liver problem? Yeah. Yeah. So, it. Some people are so fizzle sprung, <laughs> so out of harmony with with nature, that if you cure one thing on them, it's going to make something else worse. Or if you yeah. cure something without curing the whole body, it's going to make the body collapse. It it can't stand that instant healing. So you've That's got why you to need a holistic eight. approach. Yeah, you've got to do it a little bit at a time. You've got to use low, low amperage on the frequencies that you're going, so that the magnetic fields that they're creating aren't harmful. Yeah, it, overwhelming. Okay, every everybody in the whole dead blame world sees electricity as volts, amps, and ohms. Well, that's only three fifths of the deal. Frequency and magnetic fields are seldom included in that. Yeah. And without those extra two, you don't have a picture of what it's doing. A magnetic field yeah. can hurt you at proper in, uh, magnitudes. An electric field can hurt you at proper magnitudes. Walk inside of a substation when it's operational. Every hair on your body will stand up. Yeah. The, you you've got to understand what's happening. Yeah. And most folks that are playing with it only see three parts of it. Like you can separate cool fog with with uh, frequency. 
make hydrogen and oxygen right there out of out of fog. Yeah. Now, have you two guys um, talked about what the expected errors in the beginning should be? Things that you should probably look out for, but you'll probably do them anyway. Mistakes that I've made. Burn your finger on the hot glue gun. Oh, okay. Uh, mm. Careless. Burn it right off the bat. Just get it over with. <laughs> well, no, because you're going to do it four or five times every time you touch it. <laughs> you know, just get used to it. Right, right. <laughs> Danger, if, Will if, Robinson. If, hot glue if, gun. If you possibly can, grow quarter-inch long fingernails so okay. that you have something that doesn't feel the heat to use. Right, right. Um, I can do that, actually. <laughs> you're, you're being held down at the office anyway, so go ahead, grow them. Um, yeah. Well, something. I was already there. We retired, so I, I never went anywhere anyway. So, Forgetting to turn the coil over every circuit? Oh, yeah. Um, getting kinks in your wire. Okay. Kinks are a bummer. And if you get a really tight kink in your wire, you might as well throw it away. Toss it. I should have ordered two rolls, huh? I, Is it something I've they got, have down at the hardware store, that kind of wire? To... <clears throat> we had to order ours. I couldn't find any magnet wire anywhere in town. But... I went in asking for annealed wire, which is what they used to wrap with, and they don't even make that anymore. Oh. Uh, so what I'm using isn't really what I'm supposed to be using then. It'll work. You could use yeah. lamp cord and it would work. But the yeah. efficiency that you get out of it may be limited. Yeah. It won't be much with that tinned wire. It, it maybe maybe two amps less per volt. Okay. And that's going to vary depending upon where you are with the magnetic ley lines, what kind of of ambient magnetic fields you have in the room that you're working in. All of those things affect this. Right. All of those things, and they affect everybody's electronic equipment that they're trying to balance. Right. So keep that in mind. Yeah. I want to build a magnet factory on the intersection of two ley lines. No doubt. I'm pretty sure they've got them all wrapped up. Probably. I'd be surprised if they didn't. Mostly with ancient megaliths. Yeah, I mean they've already they've already been mapped out, and there's all the major ones have pyramids or you know some kind of stones or obelisks or something on them. Yeah, you know, all all connected with magnetic and conductive tunnels. Mm -hmm. So they're just giant, giant, giant computers and power systems. Yeah, yeah power system for the whole computer and that computer logically created whatever they did. They, it was all frequency. The, the civilization before us that vanished before the flood they were building spaceships. At least. They, at built, least. they built a spaceship and left. <laughs> well, 25,000 25, years ago or more when the, when the pyramids were built that was done with frequency. Yeah. Those stones, either that or people were 200 feet tall in those days. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, that was like Lincoln right. lost to them. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> and, Not likely. Well, well, we'd, find, we'd find a lot more uh, giant footprints. Do you ever yeah. notice how they underplay us? Like being a human isn't a miracle enough. Let's put a lot of attention on outer space and aliens. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but then you try to define what, what being alive is, and it takes you five, maybe six years. <laughs> it's a long story. <laughs> well, I, I just, sometimes when I hear the educated among us, 
prat and to me it's prattle about things they believe because I have yet to see any proof of any of it. Just stories right. to me. But, you know, it's the same as the gods of that of, you know the Scandinavian gods. Were they ever real or are you guys just talking about stories? So right. well uh it hmm. I get a little bit lost in the conversation because my thinking is so limited. <laughs> I find it difficult to believe that out of all those bright spots in the night sky that there's not another civilization at least as smart as we are. We're here. Or, I mean, come at on. At least in talk. Yeah. In but, I mean, we're here, so why not? It's a good thing, but. When they start writing about mixing us together and shooting them and all, cutting them up and all, that's just crazy talk. It takes the uh, the reality there could be out of it for me, because I'm I'm a peace lover now. I'm not I'm not a warrior no more. Retired, done fighting. Yep, I've always been a peace lover. So. Yeah, but it's better to be a warrior who raises a garden than a gardener who needs to be a warrior. Well, that very well may be true, but I don't I don't see a need for that defensive thinking in my in my physical reality. If I lived in LA I probably would. When I lived in the city in the last big city I was in I did. But how I live now, no. no. Yeah. I think it's uh, frequency. You live at the end of the world, and yeah, you can do that. (laughs) But I think that your frequency and your vibration that you that you believe you're on is what you're on. If I wanted to be surrounded by ignorance and and anger and hate, I could go out there and find it. But I don't. Yeah. Yeah. See, I go out there just willing to take whatever happens. It's good, not bad. Uh So, I don't know, but I think a lot of it is the vibration that I got about me. Because people all over my lifetime have made comments, like, innocently about, you know, remember the 60s and the 70s vibrations? It was kind of a cat clash, like a catchphrase. It didn't really mean anything, but it, inten- it insinuated shit. Yep. Okay, well... That's where I come from. So I've got ideas yep. about it, but then I listen to you know people like you and Larry talk about it, and it opens up other doorways that make sense of other things that, to this point, eh, I can take it or leave it. Well, I think I'm a properly educated American. I hate everybody equally. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you mean old bastard, and they all suck. <laughs> curmudgeons <laughs> the association and and you guys are the ones that want to figure out a way to give people free energy <laughs> so yeah figure yeah. it out go figure I'll, I'll take the grumpy old pricks over the nice guys because the nice people At usually you know with us you know you get what you get yeah. is real man nice people usually want something yeah oh speaking and of nice and, people and they're usually fake for those of you out there, that, circle. She's she's nice. But she's, for, for those of you out dark. there in Radio Land, Graham Z had a car accident on Sunday that put her down for about. She says maybe a month she should be up and running, back to normal. Damn. Yeah. So I just eh, well, she's a one of my favorite RLN reviewers. So I just wanted to mention that. And she yeah, she's yeah. resting up from her big old ass whipping. Yeah. Rest up and heal up, Grams. There you go. Yes. I'm done. Yep. <laughs> What's oh, she saying back she, there? Mary oh, has... Her ass on the radio. She wants yeah. a comment from the peanut gallery. Mary has the car-ona virus. The car-ona virus. Yeah, uh, because she uh, got front-ended by a car. <laughs> And it didn't die, and that's the good part. So Yeah. That but, is the good part. Yeah. You see, being aware. There you go. What is being aware? Or is it just being on the right frequency that'll keep you um, 
you know, alive, whatever your alive is. Being aware is confidently and calmly walking into any group, looking at all of them and figuring out who you're going to kill first. <laughs> Damn. Larry, Larry. All right, Larry. He knows all the good jokes. You've been around. He He's heard a lot of salesmen come talk to him over the years, right, Larry? I'm just kidding, but that's that's your mil- your martial arts training. Yeah. Well, you got any advice for the people that that really don't understand that and you can't you can't get a virus the way we're being told we can get a virus. The way you get this virus, it has to be injected into your bloodstream. It's not a living virus, so there's no way for you to get it other than a direct injection into your blood. Okay. So we're being we're being misled and guided and lied to, like usual. What's new? Okay. Think about it. Who do you know or does anybody in the audience know personally somebody that has had it? Or not somebody not me. I don't. And I live I live there's a lot of old people in this town, man, and they're still they're still here. Okay. They're not going anywhere. I keep going, Hey where's the dead? Okay. There's two things that's happened. Yeah. Long time before the coronavirus started. Bill Gates had a vaccine that went all through China. It was yeah. a free vaccine that Bill Gates gave to him. Oh, he didn't give it to him, but anyway. Uh, so that was the beginning. After that, the, I hope I'm not going to destroy your audience, but Q which is military intelligence, found out that that sort of thing was going to be used as a weapon. We developed that particular virus here in the United States. A bunch of Chinese students that were over here studying took it back to Wuhan or whatever in Wuhan. China. Wuhan in China. They started developing it. But since Q knew about it, he planted into one of those students. He he was able to let one of those students take back an additional part to it that would affect the people using adrenochrome as well. Ah. Adrenochrome is... The scared to death little children's blood and the pineal glands and things like that yeah. from all these cannibal Satan. This crowd's, this crowd's familiar with adrenochrome. Okay, so that that's what started it over there. But five G, which completely covers almost all of China now, and started out in Wuhan. That was their first covered city. 5G frequencies energize these things and make people sick. So it's a combination of the Bill Gates, the Q, and the virus with the 5G that aggravates it. Now, is it a frequency or is it a flu? It it's it's a virus, but it's energized. It's uh, exasperated by the 5G. So if you're already ill of something else, it's like getting hit with a brick. Yeah. All yeah, right. So, so if you already yeah, have that, about that. Free good, it's going to make it where your lungs shut down. If you've already got a cold, it's going to give you pneumonia. Right. Uh, it, it's, it just makes everything worse. worse. Magnifies everything. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, okay, I understand all that. But I do not think that a two percent death rate for anything. The I'm regular gonna, flu kills yeah, many, more people. many, many more. Yeah, more people are going to commit suicide than are going to die of this damn coro- uh, whatever it is, Corona. Yeah. But well, <sighs> what are we going to do? The flu killed eighty thousand people in twenty eighteen. 
Yeah. So 80, what? Eighty thousand. That's more than it's killed. That's more than this thing's killed across, uh, globally. Yeah. So <sighs> far. So it ain't no deal. But they got a lot of shit going on because because they claimed it was That's a big right. deal. The That's threat. Psyop. It's a psychological <laughs> operation. It, uh, and, and and look at where it's shut down. The, all the corrupt people live on the East Coast, right? New York, <laughs> Washington, D.C., California, where the movie star folks that are all into that sort of thing. The, where, the, where the most corrupt people are <laughs> is where it supposedly hit the worst. Hmm. So all uh, they're doing yeah. is cleaning out the swamp. You have been hearing about a lot of them getting it. Yeah. I, I just thought posted of it. an article this morning. What is it? What? Uh, mm-hmm. Twenty-eight hundred New York cops got it. So mm-hmm. what? Or it's something a like flu. that. I mean, are people that weak? They're all so ill already that they get the flu and die. Wow, we've come a long way in, in the, the sixty years I've been around. Mm-hmm. And when I was growing up, if one kid in the neighborhood got some stupid little childhood disease they have a party and get us all sick at the same time yeah so the parents wouldn't have to do hey one's kid sick this week and then next week it's a different one because we all went to the same school measles mumps and chicken pox but i don't know things changed Uh, Ten thousand french police quarantined uh can you believe what you read though because yeah italy shut down I What's don't that? know. That's the Vatican. Yeah. Cirque, Cirque had a co-worker drive back from where? A week ago from where? Do you remember t- you're telling me one of your co-workers was driving back from a, somewhere? Oh, they were in Spain and they drove back here, right? Yeah, and she was okay. telling me that they're... Uh, they they were so surprised there was hardly anybody on the road. Nobody bothered them, and they just drove home quick from Spain. Mm-hmm. And this is what a week ago or something. So there's the world that we read about on the internet. We see links, and we get told all kinds of shit. And then there's this world that if you go out into it, it's different than the one you read about. It's a whole different picture, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it's huge. It's not just here. I mean, I've been yeah. seeing links of hospitals that are empty. Now, that's a lot of work for these people to go through to look for old crap and make it sound like they're doing it today. I don't. I think it's real. I think we're seeing empty hospitals and empty streets. And the people that we know that well, have traveled what's, what's, back it up. What's really scary is how quick and easy the people rolled over and just Took it. Swallowed it and took it. Yeah. That, that um, right the hell um, over. And, and we'll continue to forever now because this is so hard to explain. <laughs> it's simple. Yeah. But if you're educated and you watch a lot of television, <laughs> seen all those alien movies and the, you know, the scamdemic movies, you're prime. Yeah. You're in that fear level. <laughs> you wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know a response from a threat. Yeah, well, I can see that, but I don't. I don't, know. I don't feel it. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, all I all I can see is what I can see, and, and that's the results of things. And hmm. yeah, I see some some uh, empty shelves in the grocery store. I see people walking around Still. with masks and gloves on. Still, uh, wow. so far that's about all I see. Restaurants are closed. That's the only thing bothering me. Yeah. I can't I go out to my favorite yeah. places to eat. <laughs> it does. I, I went into a subway the other day. Really? And they, oh. Yeah. They said, "Would you please stand on the on the X spot on the floor so that we can <laughs> keep social distancing?" Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we laughed. Yeah. Because uh, we're being lied to again. What's new? Oh well. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't losing my mind completely because. Uh, if I read enough internet link and watch enough internet Well, you links, lost your mind a long time ago. So but I would be convinced. Really matter, it? Yeah, but if I read any more on the <laughs> internet, I'll be convinced I'm walking over dead bodies on the way to the store. But see, you are. Well, I haven't got you that. You can't see them. Right, I haven't got to that stage yet. I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> 
a couple of more inoculations. Oh, man. And I'll be seeing Jesus in the sky. And I'm a Jew. Jesus. Jesus Christ. <laughs> wow. What a world we're in, though, isn't it? <laughs> we have all this knowledge collected. And we're all split up in these little tiny groups where people don't get to know a whole lot. That's a big part of the whole thing. They want us all separate and afraid of each other. I would have never, ever, probably in a million years, found what Larry has tripped over. If if I hadn't been introduced to Larry, I would have. Yeah. How, how in the hell would have I, I, I ever found him? Wouldn't have been looking for him. So it's one of those lucky things. Yeah. Well, I think there's a lot of people out here in the radio land that have the intellect to understand his side of this. And I wanted to make a radio program. Yeah, that. I can't be the only one. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 Rob. Try to be a curmudgeon all you like. Please. I knew, I knew Grim, I know Grim there could do it if he was had the interest and in, in mind to do it. Sock puppet could definitely do it. Um, if he had the mind to, um, I see, there you go. If I can do it, there's, anybody yeah, Trump, he could world. do it, I bet, if he wanted. Yep. Uh, yeah, but Larry, understanding what you do and doing it are not the same thing. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm much better at following in footsteps than I am with, uh, <laughs> forging my own way. <laughs> yeah. So some old knowledge we're playing around with here, Rob. So <laughs> you'd have to be really yeah, old. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and I understand that. Larry's not trying to take all the credit, but. Uh, when, when we first started to thinking about doing this, I got an old book, an old engineering book from the 1860s yeah. on how to make generators. And we wound our first coils with insulated steel wire. Okay. So it, it's step by step, ooh, ooh. and there's been a lot of... of Bad steps and falling yeah. down. That reminds me of a question. Let me get it in because we only got a few minutes left. Um, have you ever thought about or tried uh, using silver or gold wire? Silver and gold both are more conductive, and right. I think that I think that we could get more amperage out thinking. of wire doing that. But the expense. This is something that's going to last your lifetime anyway yeah. and so there's really no point in making it something that the normal people can't use True. I couldn't afford a solid silver wire coil uh, that would make a a thousand dollar piece of equipment into a ten thousand dollar piece of equipment nah. more nah it ain't that much Hey, maybe you want to talk to my people in Israel about that one. <laughs> Have your people call my people. Oh. We could nano coat wire, and that no, would let me more. lift this up here. Let me lift this up. Hey, I you think the Donald would want one of his made out of gold? Hey, you could probably sell him one if you just make oh, it out on. of gold. There you go. You've, you, you've just got Donald um, Trump if you make it out of gold, people. Okay, so. <laughs> Where's those specs? I don't know. Come on. Anyway, we're coming up to the end, Rob. I know. Well, I'm just trying to look how much this weighs. True. And, hey, uh, that was an informative little bit of uh, radio you guys did tonight. Yeah. I Actually, appreciate it. A little late. We got a few minutes yet. Oh, I'll, I'll let you close up. Because, yeah, well, I was uh, having a little computer uh, problem again. Before the podcast. Right? But, hey, thanks a lot, Larry, for doing your Larry Woods thing tonight with us. And you too, oh, Rob. Yeah, Absolutely. Because it's like listening oh, no. to a, a, it's like a class where somebody's interacting with a teacher. And the guy listening is actually learning something from the guy talking. It's very unique. You don't see this very often. I wouldn't try this if you're you know, not around people you trust. 
could could get hurt, get hurt and think of something. Yeah, I can't find it right now. Anyways, okay, go ahead, go ahead and uh, wrap the show up then. I was stalling for you because you were looking for something. Yeah, I can't. I'm I'm not gonna do. Well, then everybody out there in Radio Land, that was Larry Woods and Rob Works, and they were doing the uh, episode tonight on dropping a coil. And tonight's was state of the art energy. I guess we'll just continue it in parts for the notes. Yeah. And uh Rob Works is building an eight inch coil and uh Larry isn't gonna instruct him along the process. And we're gonna use the radio to document it. And hopefully we'll get some pictures in here. And yeah, I'm gonna get a picture. And throw them up on the uh Freedoms I'm Network. Get a little, you know, get some of your people to take a look at this stuff. Put it up on your, uh, uh, what's that thing called? Damn it. Facebook. I never use it anymore, so it's, wow, I had a brain fart. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, anyway, thanks a lot, guys. And uh, you got anything to close with, I'm done. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, guys. I'll I'll see you next Thursday. Absolutely. All right. Over and out.